There are four types of infections in bacteria gram positive, gram negative, atypical, and anaerobes. So, what are the gram positive bacteria? Gram positive bacteria are the bacteria who will just move in the aeroplanes, they are in the air. So, they will come to your wound. So, any skin infection like carbuncle, foruncle, any surgical site infection, they are gram positive bacteria. They, you can inhale them. So, ENT infections in the lungs and brain is universal. Uh, any gram positive, negative, anything can go to the brain. So, these are the main organs of the gram positive bacteria. So, for the gram positive bacteria, we have antibiotics. First of all, there is penicillins, which act primarily on it, but uh, they were uh, they were discovered long back, and they are not used uh, too often these days. Penicillin is only used in the infections like RHD, with a long uh, lifelong prophylaxis. Uh, other ones are amoxicillin, amoxiclab. There are normally uh, strep and septo infections. Uh, there is resistance. They, dis uh, they develop the bacteria called MRSA and VRSA. They are resistant to the methicillin and even vancomycin. So in these uh, infections, normal ampicillin uh, homoxyclab won't work. So you'll have to use the uh, antibiotics like linzolate and uh, uh, vancomycin, deptomycin. These are the higher antibiotics we use in gram-positive bacteria. So this is the hierarchy of the antibiotics in the gram-positive bacteria. So the next comes the gram-negative bacteria. So what are the gram-negative bacteria? They are traveling in the ships. They are basically the waterborne. So they they are traveling via water. So the you will uh, ingest them. So they will cause the GID infections, urinary tract infections, and brain, as you know. So they'll infect these organs mainly. So any uh, patient coming with the uh, sepsis your focus is mainly gi or uh, urinary u urosepsis is very common in elderly patients so you will suspect gram negative the gram negative sepsis is very you know severe and uh, gram negative uh, uh, infections can also involve lungs how it will involve it is no, uh, like hospital acquired infections whenever a patient is on ventilator and the suctioning during suctioning the suction catheter you are touching here and touching here and there and then going for the suction those bacteria will uh, infect your lungs also so these infections are very severe and can be lethal so antibiotic selection will be first of all used to be uh, aminoglycosides like amikacin, gentamicin the old clinicians and the practitioners used to use these drugs uh, then uh, there are fluoroquinolones, lungs like norflox, sofflox, ciproflox Moxie, Getty, you name it. And uh, we don't use these much because there is evolving resistance for, for chlorophenolones. And the other are like cephalosporins. Uh, cephalosporins are like first generation to fifth generation. First generation is for gram positive mainly. But as you move up, they cover gram negative mainly and uh, sometimes even anaerobes. So third generation, fourth generation cephalosporins are mainly for gram negative infections like ceftriaxone, cefepine, okay, and the other drugs are herovenum, they cover like a whole spectrum of the disease. So the third comes atypical, atypical are nothing but gram-positive bacteria, but they are atypical as you, as the name call it. Uh, they don't involve the lungs as a, uh, typically, they involve both the lungs like viral pneumonias, and these are like, uh, they will cause cough without sputum, and ARD is like picture. So these can be covered in the, by like antibiotics like azithro and uh, you must have seen like in the wards and ICUs when there is a patient of COPD coming and you are not sure about the uh, folk, uh, like uh, the cause of the uh, infection. We usually go for like ceftriaxone uh, with azithro or amoxiclab with azithro to cover both typical and atypical gram positive bacteria. Last is the uh, anaerobic infections they are like uh, normal pathogens present in the gut and uh, oral dementary canal and everywhere they cause like clostridium difficile infections and uh, in the anaerobic infections there are mainly two to three antibiotics we use in the uh, from the below the waist we use metro above the waist we use clindamycin uh, but whenever there is a patient with aspiration we use metronidazole in that patient to cover the anaerobic bacteria. So these are the basic uh, 
uh, like basic protocols you call it uh, for the patient selection and antibiotic selection so yeah